you did mention, Sue, about 300 therapists already identified, uh, recognized as safe hands. Spas. Spas, spas uh, recognized yeah. as, as safe hands. Were those spas closed during the lockdown? Or do you think there is a, a chance uh, that the, the authorities, local authorities, recognize that safe hand spas uh, serving specifically clients in a very safe way, sanitary, um, sanitization, all the SOPs are there, um, but especially caring for them at a moment when so many people going through cancer um, treatments oh, okay. yeah, or follow-ups um, yeah. oh, okay. cannot, simply mm -hmm. cannot for, 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 for about eight to nine months now. Uh, having someone who, who they, can, they can trust for uh, a very serious and efficient treatment. Could that qualify spas and therapists as essential workers in, well, in, the, in the coming future? I think, that, I think that is a way to go. And as I said to you before, I think because we've got oncologists coming on side, um, we've got a lot of doctors who totally believe in this. Um, you know, there were so many myths, weren't there, around massage before for, for people going through cancer. As there will be all these contraindications we're talking about for the other lifestyle diseases. So I think it gives you a much stronger footholding to then go forward with government. And we've got Caroline Noakes on, on side, which is brilliant. You know, she's in the UK, she's an MP, and she's really fighting the corner. Um, and I, yeah, I, I, I think there are a lot of nurses who totally can, who can see, especially in hospices, they see the results. Um, and generally speaking, there's a lot more doctors. The medical profession is definitely tinted, tilting over, which is fantastic. Again, baby steps, but yes, it's coming. And, and um, I'm working a lot with doctors and virologists and I can see the change. I can see that 10 years ago, doctors were just poo-pooing the whole spa industry, massage everything. And now in the States and in Europe, they're really beginning to come around and see the benefits. And I was working with a doctor at Imperial College and he based, he was uh, very interesting because he said for depression, I would rather send somebody to a spa for a massage once a week. And I said, well, surely the government's never going to be able to afford that. And his answer was, well, it will be cheaper than giving them antidepressants for the next 20 years. So it's, you know, once, I think this is what I, about the you know us turning and we have to um we have to take a much broader view as i said at the beginning we're, we tend to be a bit incestuous and we all love and, and adore each other which is all fantastic and i'm not poo-pooing it but we've got to rise above it and we've got to look at the business look at the health of the nations um and see where the industry can really help even to the point i was thinking about it with the vaccination I was thinking when we opened Corinthia in London with the lifestyle piece and we had um, a naturopath, an acupuncturist, a sports scientist and so on, they were all um, trained in phlebo phlebotomy. And if we could get our seniors, you know, with the really good anatomy and physiology to train to do these things, those sorts of things, it could be such a big add on to the health systems that are so overloaded and will be for the foreseeable future. Absolutely. Please, before I move on to my very last uh, question, um, because I know time is running out and I'm so grateful for your time. Um, t tell me, Global Wellness Day, World Wellness Weekend, uh, all those events, how do you see their relevance in, especially now in 2021, when we believe that people need more and more reminders, not just one day or one weekend, but definitely having access to possibly a calendar of events, of wellness activities, programs, staycations, get wellness getaways when, when uh, travel uh, restrictions are, are lifted, or even workations, because now people are thinking, hey, there's another lockdown coming up. I'd rather be locked down in Tenerife or in the Grand Canaries. Well, they or, are. Or, and they are. They're traveling, and then they're, they're taking all the tests, and they're staying for a month at least visiting, but definitely working. So how do you feel it, it is, is the, the need right now to have re, re, regular reminders for people to take care of their wellness and do their loved ones? Do you mean consumers or do you mean the industry? 
Absolutely, consumers. I'm referring to wellness enthusiasts around the world looking for reminders and places where to go to continue to practice and, and move on their wellness journey. Well, I think, so this is an observation from me having left Espa now nearly three years and um, not doing social media at all because it was just driving me insane. And forgive me, anybody out there who I haven't connected with on LinkedIn, forgive me, but I'm getting 500 invites a week and I just can't deal with it. it well, I don't want to deal with it. I, you know, so I kind of sit back and observe maybe a little bit too much because I don't get me wrong, I'm giving back all the time. But, um, and it's not a criticism. I think we, I think we do too much for ourselves and not enough for the consumer. So I think we're all amazing ideas and people rally together and it's so good for morale. All of that is so good for morale. But I think we have to do more to reach the consumer. Now there's a lot of obviously tour operators and agencies and people who are doing exactly what you say. But I, I mean, I, I'm interested with some of the trade magazines that we don't actually start something that's more consumer fo focused. It can, online, preferably, because obviously that's the way to go global fast. Um, and it is difficult to market. You know, if you're small or you're an independent, you, you, your marketing costs can be huge. And um, if I love the idea, so what we did like you with SATCC was we had a global, you know, put in your postcode and you find your location and we need to do much more of that sort of thing. But again, reaching consumers. So as much as we all love each other, we've also got to look after each other's, you know, our own businesses and look at that direct marketing to consumer. There's not enough of that. Um, and I think that's the way forward. But I think we've also got to, Jangi, we really have to take responsibility for de defining the words and what we can deliver. Because if we all say we're sleep specialists, what's the difference between somebody giving you a cup of chamomile tea and a piece of lavender on your pillow and a neuroscientist who's looking at your cognitive health because you, you're so anxious that you're not functioning? Um, you know, there's, it's so diverse. It's such a big bandwidth. So I would love to see us define it more. And obviously with Global Wellness Summit, Global Wellness Institute, we discuss it all the time, but nobody really gets that separation. You know, what is spa? If you're a spa, be a spa. Don't try and be a wellness center. A wellness center is something completely different. And spa is not going to go away. I think people are going to want touch. They're going to want looking after. They're also going to want fun so that they can't wait for that thing where they can go back with their friends to a spa for the day. So. Spa is spa, beauty is beauty, wellness is wellness, well-being is well-being, integrative health is another one, you know.